Welcome back to my channel. It's been a little while. I've been trying to navigate the road of dealing with lockdowns and what that means for us and our family. It's been 226 days since lockdowns first started and while I am in regional Victoria that means that our restrictions are not as severe as that of met Metro Melbourne um, but it does mean that I am very isolated from my community um, that I used to be connected into um, and a lot of them are in Metro Melbourne um, and even with my regional um, community uh, things just haven't been the same so I've been trying to navigate that and deal with that um, but I feel ready to come back on here and I thought why not start with a garden tour it is two-thirds of the way through spring and lots of things are happening in my garden and it's been a while since I showed you that so why not go and have a walk through and see just what is growing on I thought I'd start in my hothouse where a lot of my seedlings are still residing. I have overwintered chilies in here and they're starting to fruit. Lots of flowers, some foxgloves and rue. These are Australian natives. They are blackwoods and they are a great pioneer tree. So um, they'll be forming part of a windbreak and they fix nitrogen too. So fantastic species to have here on the farm. I've got artichokes more overwintered chilies these are um, a cucumber melon so really little um, grape sized cucumbers heaps and heaps of flowers and heaps and heaps of tomatoes these will be going into the ground over the next few weeks um, risk of frost it should be gone a few of them have started to flower and some tomatillos they're starting to flower they need to go in the ground trying to navigate my way through here <laughs> I have some more eggplants and capsicums that I've grown from seed some of the watermelons watermelons are starting to um, pop up some different types of basil got some more eggplants here some more capsicums here and a few more seedlings over here we've got some chard or silver beet some basil Over here we have our sunflowers growing and some cucumbers and lots of little other things. More capsicums over here and more blackwoods here. And over there in the corner is some corn, just trying to get a head start. We've had a really mild spring here, uh, which I've been really bummed about. We actually had quite a warmer winter for where we are. We're in Alpine. Um, Victoria. Um, we are about 60 kilometers um, away from Mount Borbor as the crow flies and that's um, that is the most southern um, part of mainland Victoria that receives snow. And we can see that from our property and so we get those cold winds and it just wasn't very cold. We didn't have to light our, um, our fire. What Our little fire was going the whole time but our big fire just we lit it twice which is um, quite rare for <laughs> that time of year and where we are um, but spring's been horrible it's been very wet um, which is kind of good <laughs> um, it's been very wet and soggy um, and it's been very windy and it's been very cool so I wouldn't mind the wet if we had some sunshine with it but we just haven't had the sunshine to dry things out and to help things grow uh, which has been a bit of a bummer. Today is another one of those a very windy days, so I've got my little cat's tail on. Hopefully we can mitigate some of the wind. Um, let's see how we go. <laughs> this area here, um, my long-term goal is to have a perennial garden here, so I don't have to replant it year in and year out. So we've got our cane fruits that are on trellis along the top. And then this bed has already been planted out with asparagus that I grew from seed last year. And once I move the compost pile and harvest those brassicas at the end, which I'll show you in a minute, this whole bed I envision will be full of asparagus. And then in this bed, I've got um, garlic chives, and then I've got a perennial onion and a perennial leek. And then um, towards the back, I'll probably find something else that can go there that's a perennial but for this season 
I'm planting my zucchinis here and I'm interplanting with a flower. So I've got my dahlias in here. I've got, um, these are bells of Ireland. I've got some ornamental amaranth. I've got some um, edible amaranth and I've got some sunflowers and I'm sure there's other things in there. There is, there's zinnias over there. There's other flowers in there that I've forgotten about. Um, so now towards this end, I've got a heap of brassicas, a lot of cabbages. Um, so I've got some red ones and some, um, some sugar cabbages here. I've got a bit of broccoli as well. I've got a few more cauliflowers. That one's got a snail in it. Let me get rid of him. I've had issues with these guys. Quite a few brassicas left, which is awesome. They are a beautiful springtime treat. And a heap of cabbages too. These ones are doing really well. And I've lined my edges with calendula. These are all seedlings that self-seeded um, in one of my veggie patches. And I transplanted them here. And because it's been so wet, they really took really well, as you can see. Um, but once you have calendula, you don't need to replant it because it will self-seed everywhere. Um, but the bees love it and it adds a pop of color through these dreary months. So why not put it there? Heaps more brassicas in here. And at the back, I've got another row of dahlias. Um, so I think this one's a purple cauliflower. That one will be heading up very soon. I've got a few more elsewhere. In here is a bit of a food forest. It is full of weeds as well. This was once our chicken pens, but we had issues with the chickens and ducks in here getting botulism. So we decided to move them elsewhere and we haven't had an issue since. And then all of a sudden the grass grew. There was no grass when we arrived here. Um, and then the chickens made sure that the grass wouldn't grow. Um, but now that they're out of here, the grass is growing like crazy. But we interplanted it with some annuals. There's some citrus trees because it's a little bit more sheltered in here um, due to the um, cypress. Even though you can see it's still windy, it's because we're getting um, easterlies usually we get westerlies so that westerly would be protected by these cypress trees here's with these um, artichokes they're starting to bloom as well we've got some wormwood in here nasturtiums and then we've got our cape gooseberries because they are also a perennial but they take up so much room in my veggie beds that um, i thought i'd move them here um, one of my poor sunflowers has decided that this wind is too much I think it's had a bit of a pest attack too but I've lined the walkway with tomatoes and sunflowers so hopefully this will be um, growing up this wire and it'll be a nice little um, archway almost I'll be surrounded by <laughs> my calendula and then the sunflowers here and then in this bed this is what I call my market garden bed um, it's a little bit weedy, so let's just ignore the weeds. Um, I've got the last of my brassicas in here, so I won't be replanting anymore because of the white butterflies. I've got a few late sown broad beans, which are starting to flower. These are Chinese kale. Um, I really like them. They're fast growing. Um, you eat the leaves, it's, it's a really tiny head on it. You don't get much, but they're a really fast growing crop and they're quite yummy. Um, lots of onions in here. And leeks, so this is my leeks, um, if you can see between the weeds. <laughs> leeks and then onions. And then I've interplanted the row with um, turnips and then more onions. And these are my um, bok choy, which these ones went to seed, but that's all right. You can still harvest the outside leaves. So still making use of those. A few carrots, I've had massive issues with carrots. I've sown a couple of thousand seeds, but I've had slugs attack them all. So these are my only surviving carrots. Um, we'll try again later. <laughs> um, more onions, another row of onions, and then I've got a row of kale and then some more Chinese broccoli. Back here is mangelwurz, which is kind of like, I think it's related to a beetroot. Um, you can see it's got those kind of chardy leaves and it creates this huge um, root, but it gets huge, like a couple of kilos. Um, so they're only little babies at the moment, but um, hopefully soon we can harvest those. I've got 
a few more um, baby cabbages. These are the red ones and some more onions in between them. Hopefully being red I find that they, they don't get um, attacked by the white butterfly as much. Um, hopefully it's right this year too and we'll get another harvest. Um, I've got, I think these are green sprouting broccoli and um, some Chinese cabbage that's gone to seed so they'll get ripped out, get fed to the chooks or something like that. These are my two raised beds um, and in here I planted brassicas as well. I have harvested quite a few cauliflowers from here um, but remaining is my kale. I've got some sprouting broccoli here. I've got another one of those early Jersey Wakefield cabbages. This is a cauliflower that's heading up. I've tied it up so it stays white. I think this is another um, cauliflower that was lacking sunlight so it's gone a bit leggy but hopefully um, that pulls through. Another cabbage, more cabbages, the early jersey and this is a sprouting broccoli. You can see some of the sprouts coming up there and then on this side I've got a lot of bok choy that's gone to seed but I'll save that seed. Um, sprouting broccoli that's at the end of its life it's getting a bit spindly now but I can still harvest a few more and then I'll probably pull it out in a few weeks. I've got some leeks in here and some coriander. Um, first of my eggplants that I planted out, this is just a trial to see how they'll go. Um, this is more spra um, sorry, Chinese kale. It's at the last, <laughs> last of its life. I've, I've harvested from these quite a few times as you can see from that stem. So um, that will probably get pulled out soon too. Some more leeks, some spinach and some more coriander. So these have been very productive beds. Even though they're small, they've been um, producing a lot of food. On this side is my water tank patch. It's my little microclimate because of the concrete water tank holding a bit of heat. It's a little bit more protected here compared to everywhere else on the property. And I also grow a lot of my flowers in here because I can see it from my window, my land room window. And when I walk past it, it just makes me really happy to see the flowers. So I believe this here is a blood orange tree. It doesn't get blood colored because we are too cold here, but it produces nice oranges. And this year has been the first year that I've got a really nice crop of it. I've got a lot of my lilies in here and I feel like this year they're starting to bloom super early. So I should have some flowers here soon. I have an apricot tree here and this is planted here because it likes it a bit more sheltered. This is only a few years old and it's the first year that it's producing fruit. So we're looking forward to that. I've got a few more dahlias in here, a few bananas in here, a few yakons. I have moved them, but I had a few escape. <laughs> um, so heaps of flowers, too many to name. Some more brassicas in here. So some more of that sweet cabbage. And I've got some purple cauliflowers coming along too really looking forward to these they're just so pretty they lose their color once you cook them but they are gorgeous and a few rogue um, garlic that i didn't harvest last year and has decided to produce this year as well and some chard here and the beautiful foxgloves i planted these as seedlings last year and they are blooming now and they are just gorgeous and the bees love them over here in my zone one, I have my herb garden, the beautiful pineapple sage. I do have fruity sage as well. Some more calendula, of course. I've got nice hyssop, heaps of mints and thyme. Um, I've got some horseradish in here too. Oregano, rosemary, sage. Look at that beautiful flower on the sage. The bees love this when it's in flower. And then in here, I've planted some new um, seedlings, so this is a wild oregano, some Moldavian, Moldavian dragon, um, some more sage, 
this is society garlic perennial um, melissa or um, lemon balm the bees love this when it flowers and it's so medicinal i've got my aloe vera here i've got some red vein sorrel this is my lovage this is kind of like celery it's a perennial it's a fantastic addition to the herb garden and some more rosemary and here the rhubarb is going nuts i originally wanted this to be planted out in strawberries but i thought the birds would make a mess of it so i thought why not put the rhubarb here it's so lush and colorful and i often walk out of my front door and pick a nice big bunch of rhubarb and make a comforting dessert with it so I re I'm, I've been really happy with it here. Now let's go down to the market garden but first I've got these two veggie boxes with more foxgloves in them <laughs> blowing in the wind. I've also got my um, alpine strawberries that I grew from seed last year got so many flowers and fruit already on them I've got some billy buttons in here which is a native Australian flower I've got another bells of Ireland in there I've got some more asparagus in here I might move these next year to the perennial bed because I'm not happy with them here the asparagus just keeps being bitten off by the parrots that we get here and so that's a bit frustrating and it's much the same on this side although we've got hops here this will grow up and eventually we want it to go up and over to the house to protect us from that hot northerly sun through the summertime. <laughs> These beds are a work in progress but I've got a few artichokes here um, and some more rosemary. On this side here I've sown a green manure crop of peas which I'll chop and drop and then in here I'll plant my pumpkins and melons so that whoa it's windy <laughs> so those peas will fix nitrogen and also um, make lovely mulch for my garden you can see just how many artichokes are there I mean they're just stunning they're a beautiful plant and when they flower the when they um, open up and flower they've got this beautiful um, purple fluffy inside that the bees adore so a few of those will go to flower and a few of those will be eaten as well but let's go down now to this area of the market garden it's fairly bare because I haven't planted out my summer crops yet um, but there is still a few winter crops in there so on this bank here I have a creeping oregano it's a really beautiful lime green one but I've also filled the bottom with comfrey so I can chop and drop and add it to either my compost or to my garden beds directly over here I had planted out a heap of peas but I've also had issues there with rats eating my peas so only a few survived the third planting but along the bottom I have some more leeks and then over here I planted the first of my tomatoes this was an experiment to see how they'd go they're not liking this wind as you can see I have to tie that up again um, but I do have my first fruit which is a little bit crazy but pretty exciting this one's starting to turn as well very excited for tomatoes I've got some more of my alpine strawberries that I grew from seed and these here are sugar beets so we had thought that we'd use these to grow our own alcohol and we'll see how we go with that. I think they're about 20% sugar. Um, it's just an experiment. If not, we can eat them, but they're starting to bulb up as well. Let's see if we can have a look at that. Um, and if all else fails, they're a great fodder beat apparently. Um, I've got a couple of brassicas that survived the slug attacks in here. And the rat attacks too it's been interesting <laughs> and some more calendula of course this is where uh, the rest of my broad beans are they're starting to get to harvestable sizes um, they are struggling in this wind I've got one down but they did try and tie them up a bit so hopefully they survive 
um, and then a bed that I'm just prepping for summer but the chickens keep coming in and making a mess of this is just straw laid with compost and organic matter and more straw so that will build that up and I've got some more alpine strawberries so I find putting the hessian and the tarp on top just helps keeping the moisture stops the straw from flying everywhere and um, just speeds up the breaking down process and allows the worms to infiltrate it quicker and this is another cape gooseberry that i didn't move but it's doing really well here i'll probably leave that there this is a one of my garlic beds i've got 1600 bulbs in on this side i've got my italian late and at the front here i've got my rock and bowl which is my favorite these ones are starting to scape up i have picked a whole heap of them but a few stragglers are there and you can see that they're starting to bulb up too let's go find one and have a look so yes they're starting to bulb up nicely and with a few more weeks um, a few more of these leaves will die and once half of the leaves are dead we can harvest them but it looks like i'm going to have some pretty good sized garlic here again the first of my dahlias has shot up and decided to send out some flower buds which I'm excited about but along this edge here will all be dahlias I've got another bed that I'm prepping um, same method lots of straw compost um, organic matter and more straw and along the back here I've got my comfrey to try and keep that kaikui out I've got a huge kaikui problem as you can see and a few tagasaskis to help with that westerly wind it's not helping with these northerlies but um, it does offer a little bit of protection um, and then down here some more tagasaskis and some more garlic these are my longer storage garlic um, so they won't be ready to harvest until about january or february these end rows which is okay that's why i planted them in that spot because it's right at the end of the veggie patch not in my way um, and then a little bit more garlic here and then another bed that I'm prepping um, and my compost pile which needs to be spread on this area and the other areas with garlic in it more alpine strawberries and then this was my cauliflower patch which um, yeah there's only a few left in there so once they've fruited they will get chopped down I lay the leaves on the floor I'll add some of that compost, some straw, some organic matter, some straw and happy days the soil loves that. So my silver beet going to seed and then some more beds being prepped here. Over here I've got some tomatillos already in just to see how they'd go with this cooler weather. They seem to be surviving so far so let's see. Um, Angela, <laughs> some of the last of the celery it's gone to seed most of it's gone to seed my alpines and calendula <laughs> more alpines along here the kids love coming down here and foraging for that so it's been really good for them and then along the back here i've got my yakon and my jerusalem artichokes and my dahlias some of them are coming up um, and these are my gladiolis which i thought would look really pretty walking down the stairs <laughs> and looking back onto this and then yeah the last of my celery it's all kind of going to seed so I might as well let it flower for the bees um, while I don't need this space and then over there's my potato patch so I just need to mulch this area here and I'll be done and plant a few few more of my perennials in there in between the two spaces here it's done so I hope you guys enjoyed my garden tour and I'd love to hear what you think of it down in the comments below